The turning technique I'm going to show you is going to be um, turning the fabric over the stabilizer. And I teach this technique for beginners. I find that most beginners can't learn the applique stitch while turning the fabric, which is traditionally called needle turn applique. So with this technique, you're going to turn the edge first so that when you start doing the stitch, you'll be able to perfect the stitch without having to worry about the smoothness of the curves and the points. So here's just a couple of samples that I've used for this technique. This is one of my very original ones with the flowers and the butterflies. You'll notice that it is softer now. I've washed it a few times, so it's softened up. But this is a good beginner design because the valleys are not too steep and the points are just not too curvy. This is going to be an easy one to do. The tulip design, a little bit more complicated, only because the points are pointier. The pointier the point, the harder it is to actually get the point nice. But these shapes are actually very easy to do. And this is one that we were actually working on for machine applique. I turned all of these edges over the stabilizer and I've positioned them. One thing I really like with this technique, after you get all your pieces, parts all glued down, all your leaf pieces and your flower pieces and your butterfly pieces, you can glue them all down onto your backing. And if you don't like them, because we use Roxanne's glue, they can just pop right up. And I could actually just take a little bit of water and get those, that um, extra to come off, and then I can position it or change the colors I want. So whereas with needle turn applique, you're kind of building on, you can't really see what it looks like until it's done. With this, before you do one stitch, you can be sure that your design is what you want. So the first thing you're going to do is take the design pattern. So this is a pattern that actually was on four sheets. I match up my edges and tape it together. That's what the scotch tape was for. Now I'm going to take my permanent marking pen and my tear away stabilizer and I'm going to trace the designs that I need. So I'm going to start by tracing this flower. Quite simple, not too complicated. I can actually simplify it and not make those valleys as deep and make them a little bit um, shallower and that's going to make it easier to turn them. Then I like to use my sharp scissors that are not serrated. So this is a knife edge scissor to cut these out. And the most important thing is cutting out smoothly. If you cut a like bobble in your piece, a strange little point in your stabilizer, you are going to see it when you turn the edge. There's no way to avoid it. So be sure that you actually cut those curves as smoothly as possible. Now this is a fun little tip for cutting out a lot of pieces all at once. So let's say I have a design with a lot of leaves that are all the same size. I can trace one of those leaves and since they're all the same size, I don't have to trace it 10 times. I can take my stabilizer, fold it, oh I don't know, 8, 9, 10 times staple it so that it doesn't move and with a good pair of nice of knife edge scissors I can cut that out very smoothly then I would recommend you bring your seat your staple remover so you don't mess up your manicure and pull those staples out So now I have a lot of leaf pieces. I could make a leaf out of every one of these. After your pattern is put together and you've traced all of your designs, all of your parts on your stabilizers, you're ready to prepare your background. So this is my background piece. Um, when we did the machine applique, I don't, you might remember that if you had a dark background piece, you could use the trans doodle to transfer your design onto your background. When it's a lighter piece like this, you probably can see through it. But in truth, if you're doing flowers and butterflies, who is to say where that flower belongs or where that butterfly is fluttering? You can put them wherever you want on your design. But you do need to be sure that you keep the design inside the size of the block. So the design I'm doing is going to be a 16 inch block. I took my background fabric. I did not do any 
spray sizing. I need that background to be very flexible, so don't spray size your background when you're doing hand applique. Instead, take and trace on your piece. Oh, I'm sorry, back up. My finish size is 16 inches. I cut my background piece two inches larger. So this is an 18 inch piece of fabric. And I'm gonna draw the 16 inch line all the way around my block so that when I'm putting my flowers where I wanna put them and my butterflies start a fluttering, I can put them anywhere I want inside that 16 inch square. Now I'm gonna take my background piece, I'm gonna fold it in half once, then twice, and then fold the ends in to make a triangle and press it. After you've pressed it, you're going to have some creases to help you, the registration marks, and that's going to help you position your design. If it's a symmetrical design, you'll be able to follow those creases to keep everything in line. I have all of my pieces cut out now, and it's time to pick the fabric that I'm going to use for my applique design. I do want to show you the idea of using a fabric that has a fabulous design in it and fussy cutting those pieces. So for this design, I needed a leaf. Here's my leaf. Look at this fabulous fabric and that leaf. I'm going to position it so I'm going to cut out that leaf. So I'm going to come around to the back side of the fabric. I'm going to use my glue, big glue stick and put a bob of, blob of glue on there. And since I'm impatient, I'm gonna take my iron to make it stick down faster. This is where I like to use a pair of serrated edge scissors so they have little teeth on the blade. And it's gonna help cut out that single layer of fabric. So I'm gonna cut it out a quarter of an inch larger than the stabilizer template. There we go. Now I'm going to work on my craft sheet. So this is that nonstick craft sheet. Now I'm going to use my pen style glue stick. For points like this leaf, you want to start on the two ends first. So I'm going to put some glue on the end. Then I'm going to fold it over and press it down. Come to the other end. Put on some glue. Fold it over and press it down. You gotta be really patient. The wet rag that I talked about earlier is because you're gonna get glue all over your hands. So keep the wet rag handy so that you can wipe off the glue. Now I'm gonna put the glue on the edge of the stabilizer. So because it's this pink glue, you can see it going down. And you need to put on a really nice amount. You want the fabric to literally be slippery on the glue. So I've slathered down a lot of glue, and I'm gonna use my awl, and I'm gonna start the turning technique at one end, tip it down, then I go to the other end, tip it down, and hold it. Now I'm gonna start to take bites of the fabric with my awl. So I grab the fabric, pull it in, put my finger over top. Grab the fabric, pull it in, finger over the top. Now this is a nice, gentle curve, so you can get around it pretty quick. There. Now if I find that there's something not quite right, maybe one of the pieces I pulled in a little far, or there might be a little crease on the outside edge, the fabric is actually movable on that glue. So I can slide the fabric around from the back side until it's the nice smooth edge I want. Again, patience, just glue it. There we go. Now we're gonna take the next side. Again, slather on some glue. And turn the edge. So start with one point, bring it down, hold it. Next point, bring it down, hold it. Wipe the glue off your fingers and then take bites of the fabric with the awl, hold it down, bring your fingertip over it, and hold it down. Be patient. Be sure all the edges are nice and smooth like you want them. 
and bring your iron to it. Look at that leaf. That is so cool. So here is a flower. With the flower, I actually have inside valleys. That's where I'll use my small pair of scissors to clip right into that valley. Same idea with the glue, gonna slather it on the edge. Bring one side of the valley over, then the other side of the valley over, then take the bites with your awl. The tighter the curve, if it's a tighter curve like this little flower is, you're gonna have a harder, to harder time getting around the edge, keeping it smooth. So remember, you can take your awl and actually position it back to the place where you want it. Once you're sure it's there, glue it or iron it down. Then here's another shape. This shape has actually got an inside curve. When there's an inside curve, you have to clip that inside curve so that it, it can actually fold over onto the um, piece of fabric and release it. So let me show you. I'm gonna start with my tip. Fold that over to just to the tip. Now slather some glue on that inside curve. And this is really easy. You just take your thumb and fold it over. You don't even have to use your awl to press it down. And that's gonna make a really smooth inside curve and with this outside curve, this is the sharpest outside curve we've done. Lots of glue. The, 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 the steeper the curve, the curvier the curve, I guess, the littler, littler the bites need to be. So you'll just take a little bite, bring it in. A little bite, bring it in. Slowly work yourself around that curve till you get just the right shape you want. After all your pieces are done with the stabilizer, it's time to put them onto your applique background. So to do that, I'm gonna use my Roxanne's glue. I'm gonna take my dots of glue and just put a dot every inch or so. And position it wherever I want it. So here's a nice flower that I did earlier. Here's a bias edge. I used the, some leftover bias stems from a previous project. Just put them down as the two stems and I'll have my flower and I'll create my entire design. So again, remember with this technique, because you're turning the edges first, you can lay the whole design down, be sure you like the placement, be sure you like the color before you actually glue it down and then you can change your mind. You can always pull up the Roxanne's glue until you start stitching. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single one. Leave a comment. We would love to hear from you.